Hello. Hello and welcome at this shock webinar about making research data fair. I'm Cristina Pajor de Meiti uh, from University of Ljubljana, where I work as a research assistant in the field of corpus linguistics. I'm also part of the shock team that is responsible for uh, providing the research community with learning opportunities. Uh, and this webinar is uh, a part of our activities. I would like also to welcome Anka Vlad, uh, who will be our speaker today. Now, Anka, please share with us a little bit uh, about your work and experience. Um, hello, hello everyone and welcome to our webinar. Um, sure, so my name is Anka uh, and I work in the data management and data publishing team at the UK Data Service, um, meaning that I manage the data deposit process for our reshare uh, data repository. I advise researchers on data management, um, data deposit and data publishing. And I review data coming in uh, and I eventually publish this online for others to use. Back to you, Christina. <laughs> okay, th thank you, Anka, for now. Uh, before we start, uh, the main part of the webinar, just some technical notes, some house rules, and a very brief introduction of uh, the shock project. So please be aware that only the speakers were granted the permission to use the camera and microphone. Uh, so you won't be able to um, ask questions this way, but all questions and feedback are well, uh, very welcome. So do ask them in the chat. You will find the chat on the left side of your screen. Also, the webinar is um, being recorded, but not the chat. Uh, so do feel free to ask any questions. Uh, you can post them uh, into the chat box, as I mentioned, as we proceed through the uh, webinar, and Anka will then answer uh, them at the end. Slides are all already available um, on the link that is provided in the chat box. And after the webinar, uh, you will receive an email uh, with the links and the recording um, and the slides. So now, just a very brief introduction to the SHOC project. Um, the acronym SHOC stands for Social Sciences and Humanities Open Cloud, and represents one of five clusters of the uh, European Open Science Cloud, also known as EOSC. The project will run for another two years until 2020 and uh, is bringing together 45 partners, among which mm, there are various European research infrastructures and libraries that are contributing to the SSH domain. The main uh, objectives of the SHOC project include seamless integration of SHOC into EOSC and the SSH market, open marketplace. Um, this open marketplace will offer high quality tools and data, which will be openly accessible, but also secure. SHOC also supports the development of the state of the art research infrastructure through different cluster projects, as well as supports the research communities in maximizing reuse through open science and fair principles. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, this webinar is a part of shock training activities. The shock team tries to support with these activities uh, various research communities in the SSH domain, as well as other interested individuals in their needs for new skills. Since shock is a um, very large European project that lives in the framework of uh, Horizon 2020 program, it's Training activities and materials also promote um, the numerous outcomes of the shock project, such as the EMM survey registry, to which you will be briefly introduced today. If you would like to be up to date uh, with shock training opportunities, we invite you to sign up for the shock newsletter. Um, the link is on the landing page of the shock website. Or you can also follow us on Twitter. Or alternatively, you can also check our training events page. Again, it's a separate tab on the shock 
web page. Uh, and the direct link is already in the chat box as well. Also, whether you're an experienced trainer or someone who is just starting out, we invite you to join our training community, which will provide a Europe-wide directory of certified trainers. Uh, the sign-up for this community can also be found on the SHOCK website, on this step I have just mentioned, and the direct link also is in the chat. So, um, without further ado, I'm passing the floor to Anka. Thank you very much, Christina. Um, okay, so I think, um, okay, so um, we will start the presentation now. Um, just to begin with, so here's a summary of the topics we will cover today. Um, we will shortly introduce the EMM survey registry for those that are not yet familiar with this portal. Uh, we will look then at the FAIR principles and um, and then moving on to the main purpose of this webinar, um, uh, which is what are some very useful tools and resources that um, can aid us um, if we're trying to share our data in a fair way or if we're trying to advise others on how they can um, increase the fairness of their data. Finally, we will have a, a more in-depth look at uh, QA My Data, uh, which is a tool that can help us increase the quality of our numerical um, data before publishing it. Um, also, as part of the introduction, I added a short intro here about the UK Data Service. So um, we uh, hold the UK largest um, collection of UK and international social, economic and population data with over um, 7,900 studies in our collection. Uh, this includes major UK government sponsored surveys, um, cross national surveys, longitudinal studies, UK census data, international um, aggregate business data and um, as well as qualitative data. Okay, um, firstly, we will present to you the Ethnic and Migrant Minority Survey Registry as we will use it as an example in later slides. Um, as this webinar was advertised quite widely, we just needed to ensure that everyone had a general picture of it. So um, the EMM Survey Registry captures quantitative surveys um, to EMM populations uh, that have been conducted at the national or subnational level uh, in at least one of the 35 cost action participant countries. Uh, you can see the full list of countries in the section um, below. Uh, both EMM survey, um, EMM, both EMM specific surveys and general population surveys with a substantive uh, EMM um, subsample have been included in the EMM. Um, survey registry, survey level metadata is available for each of the surveys included. Um, you can explore and learn about the different surveys and find specific surveys um, using the search filter um, and uh, sort features. Um, the registry cur is currently in alpha testing version. It is still being tested for proper functioning. Um, and user friendliness and um, the metadata contained only covers a limited number of countries so far, um, Switzerland, Germany, Croatia, Norway, Romania, and Turkey. We encourage all researchers, uh, of course, and organizations uh, producing new survey data targeting these groups uh, to include the survey information and metadata uh, in this registry. Okay, uh, moving on now to the FAIR principles and what we can hopefully do to make uh, our data more FAIR. Before we do this, let me say that I'm aware that some of you are already quite familiar with this. Um, because this webinar was advertised quite widely, first we need to ensure that everyone has a basic understanding of these principles um, and how they apply to data before we look at tools and resources to improve fairness. So we need to ask ourselves what makes data um, good for sharing and reuse uh, and what would you need in order to replicate someone else's results or reuse a data set produced by other researchers. Normally the answer to this question includes words such as high quality, accurate, um, um, well organized, easily accessible, well documented, and long term validity. Uh, ensuring that data is published in line with FAIR principles ticks these boxes if done properly and throughout the data lifecycle. What is meant by data lifecycle? It means in order to produce FAIR data, we need to have this end goal in mind. Um, 
from the very beginning of the project, starting with um, data collection to eventual uh, archiving and publication. Okay, so FAIR principles apply to metadata data as well as supporting infrastructure, for example, uh, search engines. Most of the requirements for findability and accessibility can be achieved at uh, the metadata level. Uh, interoperability and reuse require more efforts at the data level. Okay, so is data findable? Uh, the data set should have an, uh, a data set should have a unique uh, permanent address, as we uh, we can refer to it, that would allow it to be found using um, discovery portals. This is referred to as a persistent identifier uh, and is normally part of that data set citation. Uh, we have an example here. Uh, of, a cite, of a citation containing the DOI at the very end in blue. Uh, this is uh, different from a simple URL, which might not be maintained in the long term. Uh, just as important is that the data set is described by uh, preferably machine readable metadata, such as keywords, topics, uh, geography, etc. Uh, this will make it more um, likely for the data set to be returned by search engines um, and discovery portals, such as uh, our UKDS data catalog or the CESDA data Data catalog, perhaps you've also heard of that as well. I'm sure you have. Um, okay. Um, and here we have an example of a data collection available from Dataverse, uh, which satisfies this findability criteria in that it has been assigned a, a permanent um, unique identifier in the form of a DOI, which is included in the citation of the data set there. Okay. To be accessible, the data can be open, but not necessarily. Uh, if there are privacy concerns or specific consent agreements, disclosure risk, or uh, commercial interests, um, to be accessible, uh, access should be implemented using a standardized protocol. Uh, terms and conditions governing access and reuse should be clear, um, again, standardized and transparent. Um, and here we have an example of a data set or data collection which is made um, available using a standardized protocol. This is actually a data collection that we hold uh, at the UK Data Service. And as, a, as we can see, the access level is stated clearly um, in the second um, row here. Um, on the record page uh, next to the DOI, as we can see, this data is available under safeguarded access, meaning users need to register with the UKDS and sign an end user license before they can access this data. There is also an option to access data in the wrapper right uh, corner of the, uh, of the page. So users should find all the information they need on how to access this data. This is the most important uh, thing. And that is very clear how that data can be accessed. Uh, moving on to inter interoperability, <laughs> I always have a problem saying this word, I'm sorry. Data sets are interoperable, I consider interoperable, if they contain machine-readable uh, metadata, and they are in specific formats, uh, language and vocabularies, um, or ontologies. So formats are particularly important um, in the long run, as they might not be maintained, uh, for example, and of course, this is a problem for future users. Ideal formats um, should be community agreed, and this can vary, of course, across disciplines. Um, they should be open as opposed to proprietary. Uh, they should not be encrypted and therefore um, suitable for long-term um, preservation. What we called control vocabularies are also used when data are archived and made available online in order to make it easier to be retrieved from search engines. Um, this is done using various attributes such as data type, um, geography, subject, keywords, country, uh, access level, etc. Uh, for more information on this, um, please check the DDI schema link provided here. Uh, a good example here is the EMM survey registry, which we've uh, looked at already, uh, as it uses a multiple of such uh, controlled vocabularies, allowing collections to be sorted by multiple criteria, um, as we can see here. So you can sort countries by um, um, sorry, you can sort collections by country, uh, scope, region, um, start date, end date, etc. And finally, is data reusable? As we know, um, the ultimate goal of FAIR is to optimize the reuse of data. So to achieve this, uh, metadata and data should be well described um, so that they can be replicated and or um, combined in different settings. So tools such as QA My Data, which we will have a look at later, can help with this uh, to improve the data quality of, of the data that you're sharing. 
so the question here is whether there is enough information uh, about the data to allow its reuse. This includes, um, for example, provenance information, methods of collection. Uh, does it meet the main relevant um, community standards? Um, um, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, so just as important is the license under which the data is published. Uh, this should make data available to the widest uh, audience possible and allow the widest uh, range of views as possible. Okay, so finally, what do uh, the FAIR principles boil down to? Uh, so to be findable, a data set or data collection, as it uh, is sometimes called, uh, needs to be assigned a persistent identifier and should be described by detailed metadata. To be accessible, the data set uh, needs to uh, have clear access conditions following a standardized protocol that allows authentication where uh, and if that is necessary. To be interoperable, the data set should uh, be made available in, st in a standardized um, format, a community agreed format, and be characterized by controlled vocabularies. Uh, and finally, to be reusable, the data sets should have a well-defined license and ready to be um, reused in future research uh, and processed using um, computational methods. Okay. Now that we covered the essentials of FAIR, we will move on to the main topic of the webinar. So what tools and resources are there that can help us uh, make our data FAIR? Um, or at least as, as fair as possible. So before we do that, it's important to note that when it comes to data fairness, it's still a very much, uh, it's still an area with a lot of shades of gray and is more or less, um, as it's a more or less relatively new standard of publishing and archives, um, so, um, and archiving. So um, archives, data repositories and publishers around the world are still um, slowly working towards adapting their systems and procedures um, to produce data as fair as possible. So perhaps some could claim that their data, the data that we publish are 100% fair, but the reality is that most of us <laughs> are still working towards improving um, our standards and improving the data that we publish and that it's absolutely fine. Uh, it's, it's a process. So, okay, so we have here uh, the tools and resources uh, we will look at today. So we will have a closer look at uh, QMI data, as I mentioned before. So those of you who took part in the Brussels workshop um, might remember Remember this one, I mentioned it there, but now we will have a more in-depth look at it and we'll also do a short demo to see how it works in practice. Okay, so uh, to begin with, let's introduce the FAIR self-assessment tool. So this can be used to assess the fairness of a data set as well as determine how to enhance fairness if needed. Uh, the tool has been decided, uh, designed predominantly for data librarians and IT staff, but um, could be used by software engineers developing FAIR data tools and services, for example, and uh, as well as researchers provided um, they have assistance from uh, research um, support staff or not. Um, the way it works is that uh, it's asking you different questions related to the principles underpinning um, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, as we can see here. Um, and once you've answered all the questions, you'll be given a green bar indicator based on your answers in that section. And when all sections are completed, an overall fairness indicator is provided. Um, there is an important button, um, an information button, sorry, the I, which provides um, um, information, an overview of each of the FAIR high-level um, elements. Also, each question is hyperlinked to explanatory information and links to um, wider resources or related topics, so you can have more, um, you can look up more information there. Okay, next. Um, so as you know, I'm sure you already know, a data management plan, it's a great tool to have along uh, as it helps decide how research data will be managed throughout the research cycle uh, and how best to prepare for publishing. Uh, preparing ahead by ensuring that this DMP is a living document um, is key uh, to making your data as fair as possible. So uh, of course you produce it at the beginning of your, beginning of your project, but just ensure that you, this is a living document that you sort of um, always go back to it to ensure that um, you, you always um, keep those, uh, those things in mind that you have to do to ensure that um, you tick these boxes in terms of uh, how best to store data, how best to prepare data for publishing, et cetera. Uh, DMP Online 
in the sense is a great resource uh, put together by the Digital Curation Center that can help prepare a data management plan that meets uh, institutional and funder requirements. Uh, you can download uh, DMP templates um, and tool, and the tool provides uh, tailored guidance and um, example answers from the Digital Curation Center and many other research organizations. So it's a great source of um, information um, when you're trying to put together a data management plan. Okay, moving forward to the CESDA Data Management Expert Guide. Uh, so it was designed by European experts to help social science researchers make their data, uh, their research data fair. Um, divided in seven chapters corresponding to different stages of the data life cycle. Uh, it is written for social science researchers uh, who are in the earlier, well, preferably uh, in the early stages of um, practicing research data management. Uh, the seven chapters cover planning, organizing, um, documenting, uh, processing, storing, protecting, archiving, and publishing. Uh, and of course, finally, discover um, how to um, discover this data, how to find it online. Uh, okay. Then we have the uh, SSH Open Marketplace built under the Shock project. Uh, it's a discovery portal which tools and harmonizes, uh, sorry, pulls and harmonizes um, all the um, SSH tools, uh, services and software, data sets, training material and activities, workflows and scenarios useful for um, SSH research communities offering a high quality and uh, contextualized answer to um, for every step of the uh, research data lifecycle. Uh, so how can this platform be used? Uh, you can imagine a researcher who needs to perform textual analysis on um, historical texts. Um, as our survey has shown, um, they would prefer using a tool widely used in the community, ideally one that is well documented and easy to use. Uh, this is where the uh, marketplace is unique uh, in that it's a um, community oriented, it has a community oriented approach and high quality curated um, contextualization. Um, that um, comes into play. So the portal would, for instance, suggest um, a relevant text analysis software and services, and if applicable, describe how it aligns with standards and open science principles, uh, linked to tutorials and other training material, but also to a forum where other, uh, some of your peers um, would have commented on those tools and also uh, maybe, um, and also an academic paper uh, related to a researcher's experience with it. Um, the support offered to researchers will thus be suggested um, research paths they could uh, choose to undertake while um, facilitating interactions and um, networking. So hopefully that will um, also be a good um, tool for you to use. Um, moving on, the next, uh, the GoFair uh, starter kit is a um, is in fact a list of resources prepared by the GoFair International Support and Coordination Office. Um, it is meant to be a starter kit for research data management, offering offering um, an open and inclusive ecosystem for individuals, institutions, and organizations working together. Uh, the kit of, um, includes guidance on finding an appropriate data repository, where to publish your data, um, research data management support, information on permanent identifier, licenses, um, useful web pages, and presentations. Okay. Um, now, choosing a, an appropriate data repository for publishing uh, your data is probably the most important choice uh, you can make towards um, ensuring that you publish your data fair. Um, to increase fairness of your data, you, you should ensure that, that you publish your data in a trustworthy data repository. So your preference, of course, may depend uh, on the existing process, uh, practices in your discipline um, or on the expectations of your funder, for example, but it should still be you should still choose an accredited repository. Uh, the Core Trust Seal is an international community-based, non-governmental and non-profit organization from, um, promoting sustainable and trustworthy data infrastructures. Um, so the Core Trust Seal website is a great resource to, um, to find a suitable accredited repository to publish your data in a fair way. Okay, so uh, now we move on to QA My Data. Um, Okay, so rigorous data curation practices are still sometimes viewed as a dark art and easy to use tools to correct and clean numeric data are, are not widely used. 
uh, despite awareness of the desire to make data fair. So the UK Data Service deposit, um, developed a free, uh, easy to use open source tool known as uh, QA My Data that provides what we call a health check uh, for numeric data. It uses automatic methods, automated methods, sorry, to detect and report on some of the most common problems in um, survey or, um, or numeric data, such as missingness, duplication, outliers, and uh, direct identifiers. Requirements were scoped through a series of engagement exercises um, with the service's own data curation team, um, other data publishers, managers, and uh, quantitative researchers to create a comprehensive list of tests that are uh, typically used when quality assessing numeric data files. So QMI Data offers a list of um, a number of configurable um, tests, uh, meaning that they can be adapted to particular needs uh, and thresholds. We categorize these tests into four types, um, file checks, um, metadata, data integrity, and identifiers, uh, and direct ident um, disclosure checks, or um, yeah, checking for direct identifiers. Uh, what data files, uh, what data file formats uh, does it support? So it can be run on a number of popular file formats, including SPSS, uh, Stata, SAS, and CSV. The software creates, as we said, uh, a, a data health check in the form of a PDF report that deta details errors and issues as both um, uh, so um, a summary and a detailed report providing a location of the failed test, so exactly which variable and which row should be um, corrected. And as mentioned before, it's configurable, so other new tests can be added easily. Uh, the QMI data software is easily downloadable, down, sorry, downloadable uh, to a laptop or a server and can be quickly used and um, integrated into data cleaning and processing pipelines. It is available to download from the UK Data Service uh, GitHub page uh, under a Creative Commons uh, non-commercial uh, license. Okay, so here we have uh, listed some of the metadata checks that the tool will report on. Uh, so missing variable labels, no, va um, no label uh, for user defined, missing values, odd characters and variable names and labels, etc. Uh, and you, as you can see, most of these are, are customizable uh, with thresholds to be set by the user um, uh, using the configuration um, file or as we will call it in short, the config file. Uh, this file contains the commands that uh, we give the tool. Uh, we use the config file to tell the tool what it should do and what to check for. Next, we have uh, data integrity checks, meaning tests that verify the integrity of the data file, such as system missing values, uh, overdefined threshold, duplicate values and unique identifiers, or um, non-compliant characters and string values. Uh, so QMI data can check for duplicate IDs, uh, odd characters in string data resulting from open-ended questions, um, spelling mistakes in these string data, whether the date format is consistent in all values, how many values are missing in percentages. Uh, again, instructions can be altered as requested. Um, for instance, the tool will only report uh, it will only report it as an issue if the percentage of missing values exceeds twenty five percent, and you can set this, of course, to be forty percent or fifty percent, or um, yeah, um, as you wish to, to to change this. And finally, disclosure control checks useful for detecting direct identifiers. This is using uh, regex. Um, and disclosive outliers. Uh, so we'll check uh, direct identifiers, uh, disclosive outliers by checking, and disclosive outliers by checking for unique values. Um, the tool will report on uh, unique values or low thresholds, direct identifiers such as postcodes, um, telephone numbers, names, etc. These checks are dependent on what um, dictionary file is specified, of course. Um, but uh, it works pretty well with, with reporting on that as well. So uh, now we have reached the demo. Um, so detailed information and uh, installation files can be found on the UK data website, uh, and I included the link here. Um, uh, various files are available, so including a user guide, training exercise, uh, and a pers uh, purposely uh, erroneous data set, which we will um, we also use today for the purpose of the demo. Um, 
This has been produced and road tested during um, our early training sessions. Uh, the standard config file has default settings for each test. So as a threshold um, for pass or fail, um, on various tests. So for example, you will detect value labels that are uh, truncated, email addresses identified as a string, or un um, uh, un un um, the, uh, missing values that it cannot identify, uh, which can be easily adapted to meet the user's um, desired thresholds. So you can change this as you wish. Uh, the configuration file is written in uh, I YAML, a human readable data uh, serialization language that enables very simple and concise configuration files. Um, by opening the configuration file in any uh, available text editor, so you can use Notepad or you can use Pages, for example, the user can, uh, so you can easily configure uh, the parameters and change the initial settings, so the default settings for QMI data, so that it will report on what you want it to report. Um, okay, so there are a couple of teaching data sets which you can use initially to check uh, whether the installation was successful and to get a feel of how it works uh, before testing your own data sets. Um, and now we will have a short, uh, we will move to the demo um, and I will be sharing my screen. Um, okay. Yes. Okay, so hopefully now you can see my screen. Um, I will be using the, uh, the data installation guide that it's available on the website. Uh, I've already uh, run some of the commands uh, just because we, we are um, limited in time. You will, use the, you will need to use the terminal uh, application. I'm, I'm doing this on a Mac, um, but um, um, because this is what I have available at home. Uh, but if you want to run this um, on a Windows, that's fine. Um, so the installation guide um, covers both. Um, I will use the file, as I said, the, the QMI data guide, how to install and run. Um, I already saved the data files uh, in my computer to make this slightly faster, but the instructions in this file will guide you through uh, that step by step. Um, so to run QMI data, we will need to use the terminal application. As I said, okay, that is now open. Um, and if you have not used this, if you haven't used this before, the instructions also cover how to find this in your computer. So I'm simply going to add the commands from this guide uh, step by step. Uh, I have completed everything up to, up to step seven. So I'm just going to um, start now with, there are just a couple of commands that we need to run now. Um, okay. As you can see, the commands that you need to use are um, highlighted in green. Uh, so that should make it quite easy to follow. Um, make sure that you um, use these exactly as um, they uh, are in the guide, uh, because otherwise um, it will not work as desired. Uh, Okay, so as you can see, I'm just moving down. Um, there's information here on what uh, each command does. Um, we don't have time to cover this now, um, but if you have a, a look at this, uh, it is explained in detail. Um, and um, yeah, if you have any questions, of course, please get in touch with us. So now exactly how to run it. I have, as I said, I already saved the files in my computer. They are here on the QA My Data. Uh, as I said, these uh, the instructions on how to save this and when to save it and how to create the file structure, the folder structure um, uh, are available in this guide. So I already downloaded that and I already created my, my uh, command. Um, just because this is very, very sensitive, and if you have one um, wrong character, the the file won't run. Um, 
So now I have everything and I'm just going to run it. As you can see, uh, it's not a very large file, but it's running the data set. And it now produced the, um, uh, sorry, the, the report, which is here. And if we open it, it will open in, sorry not centered very well in HTML. So the header of the file contains information on the number of um, cases and variables, the uh, encoding of the file, and when the file was created and last modified. Um, all the tests listed there are highlighted in green. Um, we see quite a few have passed, so there were no issues encountered uh, according to the thresholds that are set, so the default setting. Um, so and the tests in red have failed. So QA My Data has identified issues in certain value uh, variables uh, or values. Uh, to locate the problems, you simply need to uh, click anywhere on a red test, and this will take you to a table underneath uh, for more information. So for example, if we click on the results of the failed test uh, variable or the characters um, here, um, this will open another um, uh, table underneath and it will tell us that for these two variables um, the um, the variable label is not um, contains odd characters okay um, so just to start at the top so we have um, basic file checks uh, which consists of one configurable test named bad file name so by default this will check the name of the data file to ensure um, this only consists of alphanumeric characters so a to z um, zero to nine so not all, no odd characters and then we have the metadata checks um, uh, which consists of the configurable test uh, sorry uh, we have uh, yeah for both so we have metadata checks for both value and variable label level, and the settings can be true or false value, uh, depending on whether a variable um, or a value label uh, is included in the data file. Um, so the, um, the way it works is that QMA data has a built-in spell checker test for both variable and value labels by using a user-defined dictionary uh, that allows, uh, and this allows um, spell checks for any language. Okay, and finally, we have um, uh, data integrity checks. Um, and then we can have a look here at uh, string uh, value spell check. Okay, and again, this will open um, uh, another table for more information. And it will tell us that uh, these two variables have um, issues with uh, string values, um, spell checks. Um, in exactly these row numbers. So if you would like to correct this, you would need to go to uh, this variable, to this row number, um, and correct that mistake. Okay. Um, and, and then we have a, uh, also, um, so at the bottom here, we have data integrity and this closure risk checks, um, and they follow the same rules. So, um, yeah, so the, the highlighted uh, in red cells will tell us where um, there are issues so that we can go in and fix them. Um, of course, uh, we, we are constantly working on this, so please contact us if you have any feedback. So if you try to, um, to, to test this, this tool, um, make sure to contact us if you have any feedback uh, or suggestions that, um, in how we can improve this tool. Uh, we're constantly trying to, to make it better, so please, um, please let us know if, um, yeah, if, if you have any suggestions. And um, I think I've said everything. Uh, I also wanted to mention now that we're going to go to the questions that um, if we don't answer your question now, um, please get in touch using the contact information on the final slide. Um, as that will um, give you some contact. Yeah, so um, yeah, use this contact information to contact us with any questions that we cannot answer now just because we might be, um, in case we run out of time. Although I don't think we will because there's plenty of time left. So um, thank you very much. I hope um, this was interesting and useful. Um, and I think uh, we will take questions now. Um, yes, uh, thank you, Anka, for, for this clear presentation. So um, 
now it's the time for questions. If you haven't had the, the chance to type them in yet, please do so now. Um, there were some questions relating to um, the shock open marketplace and shock project. Uh, um, we will address all these questions in a follow up email, but um, quickly just the, it will be um, shock will be integrated into EOSC, so sustainability um, will be uh, reached. Okay, Anka, the first question um, there were there were two questions related to involvement of researchers into the development of um, tools that support fair and data publishing so were researchers involved uh, in the development of these tools or not yes so in the development of um, for example qmi data the tool that um, we looked at um in the process of, of course, there was a, a stage of research where we looked at the, the kind of tests that we do internally as an archive. So when we get the data set, uh, what we look for, what we test for, what are what our what are sorry our um, review procedures, um, and that was fed into uh, into this uh, into this research. And also um, we uh, had feedback both from our um, processing team and from uh, from other researchers that uh, have published their data with us uh, just to for example ask them what kind of tests um, they they run or how they check the data before uh, they send it to us um, so yes uh, we did involve uh, both researchers and uh, and our, our staff and when we developed this uh, of course, I cannot speak for, for uh, some of the other tools because um, they're not produced by the UK Data Service. Uh, so, um, but I'm sure that when they produce them, um, I could imagine it's a very important step to include um, um, opinions and, and feedback from researchers. But I would check with them uh, um, yeah, about that. But uh, for the QMI data, yes, of course, we, we did, yeah. Okay, uh, next question came from Juliana and she asked if um, you could suggest any repositories or tools for qualitative data such as ethnographic diaries and oral history interviews. Okay, so first of all, I will, um, I would check the, um, um, the, the resource that I mentioned earlier. Um, where you can um, check for um, accredited repositories. Um, so that is the trust, um, Core Seal Trust. Um, and uh, first of all, look, have a look there uh, because th that will tell you, um, you know, a, a repository that is accredited. Uh, and then in terms of uh, one that would support qualitative data and then um, from that list of accredited repositories, then you can um, you can have a look at what those repositories, what kind of data uh, those repositories take. Uh, CoreTrustSeal.org, yes, that's the one. Um, so yeah, once once you search for a repository, then uh, it will tell you whether they take qualitative. Um, and the graphic diaries and oral history interviews. As for us, we do take such data at the UK Data Service, um, and uh, the the repository that I um, I manage or I, I review data for, Reshare um, takes uh, qualitative data. Um, a link for that um, is uh, it's just if you if you open a, a new tab in your browser and just type. Uh, reshare UK data service um, is just one word reshare uh, from sharing but resharing uh, it should come up and uh, it's a self deposit repository and um, it takes very little time to uh, to create a data record and it should be um, yeah that is that is a repository that we that we have at the UK data service but there are others um, as well so um, checking um, Checking online for other accredited repositories is also a good idea if you're not based in the UK or, yeah. Okay, the, the next one uh, is from Cynthia and um, she's asking how is QAM my data different or better than OpenRefine? 
Um, okay, so I'm not that, I'm not that familiar with Open Refine to be able to answer this question, but um, I can have a, a look. I I know about it, but I I don't want to answer without um, knowing uh, everything I need to know about it uh, and compare the two. Um, but um, if if you send us this, or oh, we will keep this, um, Christina. If we can keep this question, and then we can mm -hmm. perhaps. Um, send a more uh, detailed answer to Cynthia, if that's okay. I don't want to say anything without having, being completely confident. Yeah. yeah. Sure, sure. And the last question is uh, from Rob. Do you apply these extensive checks to all incoming data sets? Yes, yeah, so we, at the moment, we're trying to, the tool, if, if Rob means that uh, by checks, uh, the, the, the checks that I described that Here My Data does. So it's a relatively new tool. It was, uh, we finished um, sort of the, the, the final um, version came out, I think, uh, last year in October or so. So we are trying to incorporate it into our, um, into our procedures and how we check data, but um, this is, it's a slow process. So at the moment, uh, we use um, we use the same procedures that we've used before, and we are trying to uh, incorporate KMI data, um, of course, more and more into our procedures. But because it's a relatively new tool, uh, it's still in in work. Um, yeah, uh, something that we are incorporating at the moment. Okay. So, if there are no new questions, uh, just a second. Yes, no. and uh, because huh. I sorry to interrupt you, I see that there's no, a no. comment from someone on um, uh, re3data.org. Yes, mm -hmm. that's also a very good source of uh, where you can filter and search for different repositories. Also, depending on um, um, the country that you are. Um, um, perhaps you're based in or you want to um, to publish in a particular repository, uh, that's a great source of um, yeah where you can find others. Uh, it's really difficult to think now. Of <laughs> uh, but yes, that is a great one. Thank you, uh, Francesca, for uh, bringing it up. OK, so if there are no um... No other questions. I would uh, thank first Anka for her great presentation and also all of you uh, for participating and for all your questions. Uh, you will soon receive uh, a follow-up email with uh, a link to the webinar recording, the presentation slides again, and also a very short survey. We would really kindly ask you to fill it out since this uh, helps us improve our future uh, activities. So many thanks again and have a nice afternoon. Thank you. Thank you for joining.